Hello, my name is Joy with 2A Radio Center, and today I'm going to show you how to program the VX450 radio. By this time, you've already watched our video on how to install the VX450 programming software on your computer, and also how to install the FIF12 programming software on your computer. If you do not have both of these softwares programmed on your computer, please refer back to those other videos. Okay. You'll need to have both programming softwares loaded on your computer. You'll also need the FIF12 programming cable connected to your USB port on your computer and also a CT106 pigtail that connects to your FIF programming cable. Okay. Make sure that you have your VX450 radio. You can have that with the fully charged battery turned off with the CT106 connected to the accessory port ready to go. Okay. To begin, I'm going to open up the programming software. On my computer, I can click Start and all programs. There is a Vertex Standard folder. And then I'm going to click on the VX 4500, 4600, 450 series programming software. Now this programming software, it works for the VX 451, 454, and the 459. Depending on what radio you're about to program, the screens may look a bit different from what I'm about to do. I'm going to be programming a VX459 UHF radio. Okay. To begin, we have to make sure that our FIF12 COM port is configured correctly for the software. So click on File, then Configure. Okay. I'm on COM3, and it says FIF12 in parentheses. Um, your computer may say COM4 or COM8, just as long as FIF12 is in parentheses, you're good to go. If you do not see FIF12 next to any of the COM ports, please refer to our previous video on how to install the FIF12 software. Also, make sure your baud rate is set to 38,400. Um, this radio especially has a lot of information, a lot of data that can be programmed into it. And if it's set to, say, 9600, it may be too slow and your programming will bonk and time out. Okay, so I'm okay here. And now before you begin to program any of your Vertex radios, the first time when you're about to create a profile, which is what we're going to be doing, make sure you read your radio. Okay. And you can either click this icon here or click on Radio Upload. In this version of the programming software, upload also means read. So, I have my VX459 radio turned off. The CT106 cable is connected. I'm going to click on Upload. And we're programming a portable. So it says switch radio on, then start uploading. So I just turned the radio on, and now it's automatically uploading. If this doesn't begin to upload, make sure that you do have your COM port configured correctly and also that you do have a battery that is fully charged. Okay. Upload is complete. So right now, only channel 1 is black and all of the other channels are grayed out. You'll also notice that there is a second column with a channel list. If your screen is minimized like this, make sure you maximize it so you can see all of the features. It's also possible that you might not see all of this column as well, but there will be a scroll bar at the bottom so you can see more of that information. Okay, what I am going to be doing now is changing this radio, which is currently a one-channel radio, to a four-channel radio. The VX459 radio can be programmed to 512 channels, but we don't have the time for that today. We'll just stick with four. So to activate a channel, just click on the channel list to the left and hit the space bar. And that blacks it out. Um, if you only do want a one channel radio, just hit the space bar again to deactivate. Hit the space to activate, space to deactivate. So I'm going to activate all three channels. This next column says W slash N, and that's for wideband and narrowband. You can change that by just selecting the N and hitting the space key, and that changes it to W5, hit it again, W4, hit it again, narrowband. Um, due to an FCC mandate for January 1st, 2013, all business two-way radios must transmit on 12.5 kilohertz or less. So even if you do select W5 for wideband, 
when you go to program your radio, it will default that back to narrow band. And that's not two-way radio center's policy. That is a mandate by the FCC. Okay. Now, this radio is a UHF radio. You can see the serial number and also the frequency range of the radio right up at the top. So the frequency I'm going to program into channel 1 is 454.5. So just select the RX box and type in 454.5. And then you can hit the Enter key. And you see the information populates from the RX box also to the TX box. Now, if you're just starting up a system and you're not using a repeater, your TX and RX should be identical. If you are using a repeater, which is a signal enhancer, a signal enhancer for your radio, you will already know your frequencies and be aware of it. So if you're not using a repeater, just make sure that your RX and TX are always identical. The same with your sub-audio tones over here. So channel 2, I'm going to program to 465.4, and you can hit enter or tab. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate a little bit through here. Let's see. Now for channel 3, I'm going to type in 560. And the max I can go is 512. I'm out of the frequency range, so click OK. So it kicks it back to 512 because that's the highest I can go. Let's see. I'm also going to type in a VHF frequency, say 131, enter. Again, I'm out of the frequency range, so click OK. Now, if you're trying to use a frequency that you need to have in your radio and the software isn't taking it, make sure that you read your radio initially so you have the correct profile on your screen. And also verify that you have the right radio for the frequency that you need, that you're not using, you're trying to program a VHF frequency into a UHF radio, or you're trying to program a UHF frequency in a VHF radio. That simply won't work. So if you have any questions, if you need to make sure that the radio you're trying to program is appropriate to the frequency, you know, please contact us at 2A Radio Center and we will answer your questions. Channel 3, I'm going to program to frequency 467. Okay, and then channel 4, I'll just type in 454.55. Okay, the next step is to program the sub-audio tones for each channel. A sub-audio tone is also known as a privacy code, PL code, private line code, CTCSS, DCS, DPL code, or CSQ. Those are all just different terms for the same thing. It adds a different line. It adds another line of security to your frequency so you're not hearing everybody on that frequency in your area. There are two types of privacy codes. There is a CTCSS and a DCS privacy code. To select a CTCSS code, okay, just make sure you have the DEC column highlighted. Hit the space bar one time, and then a C-67 will appear. This is a CTCSS code. To look at the full table, double click on the box, and then the CTCSS frequency list will populate. I'm going to select 107.2 and the same information populated in the second column, the ENCODE column, which is exactly what we want. If you want to program a DPL code or a DCS code, same thing, different name. Okay, For channel 2, just hit the space key one time, the space key one more time. Okay, To pull up the table, just double click. I'm going to change that to 252. Another way to enter a privacy code for each channel, I'm going to want to say add a custom privacy code on here. You can type C, and then we'll say 100, enter. And that is also how you can manually enter a privacy code. For channel 4, we'll say D561, enter. Now, the VX450 software, it is very different from, say, the VX230 or VX350 programming software. After you added the channels in on this left side of the list, you also need to add the channel over here to the right side. So I have four channels. So under this column for channel 2, I need to type in 2. Channel 3, 
three, four, four. So at this point, if you've programmed your radio and you say, hey, I only have one channel in my radio, why is that? I made a profile for 16 channels. Um, the first place to check would be in this column to make sure that you have it set correctly. You see channel one, the tag is channel 001, channel two, so it's channel two, three, three, and four, four. At this point, if you also want to custom label your channels, you have that option. And this is just for the display models, such as the VX454 and the VX459. So I'm going to name this TWRC on channel 1 for 2A Radio Center. Okay. Another common feature that is programmed into these radios is a scan feature. Okay. On different versions of the software, say for a VX230, that information would be over, you know, over here, closer to the middle. For the VX450, that information is all the way to the right. Again, your computer, it might cut off this part of the screen, but there will be a scroll bar here at the bottom, so you'll be able to scroll over and make that appear. Okay. And I'm going to want to scan each channel on this radio. So to know that a channel is activated to scan, it'll have the check mark. The dash means that it is not set to scan. So for channel 2, just hit the space bar. Channel 3, the space bar. Channel 4, the space bar. If you want to delete it from the scan list, just hit space again. To add, hit space again. Okay. And then to make sure that I have one of the buttons on my, on my radio program to scan, just go to common key function. And this is the stage where you can activate you know, some of the different features in the radio. You can program the different buttons, the different features. Okay. You'll have two columns, one for press and another column for press and hold. Each button on this radio can be programmed to two different features. The press is for a short press. The press and hold is you can program a function by holding down the button a bit longer. Okay. If you want to inactivate all of the buttons, you can just change it to none. I want to set the radio to scan, so I'm going to click on the drop box. I'm going to type in S, S, S until I get to scan. You also have the option just to scroll through. See the VX450, there are quite a few different features that you can program into this radio. See. If you have a question about what any of them mean, you can just highlight, then hit the F1 key. The F1 key can be used at any point in the Vertex programming software. It is the help screen. And then you can just click on, say, monitor to find the definition of what that means. There are literally thousands of different settings that you can program into this radio. The majority of users aren't going to need you know, the majority of them. So if you have any questions, just take a look at it. And of course, if a definition is unclear, you can contact us at 2A Radio Center. Now, all I did was program button A for a short press to scan and click OK. Now, I've made the profile. I have all the information that I want to program into my radio. I want to save the profile for future use. So I'm going to click File, Save As, by default, it saves to your C drive. I'm going to want this saved to my desktop. So I just clicked on desktop. I'm going to call it VX459 demo. Save. Okay. Now to program the radio, all I need to do is go to radio and click download. Do you want to start downloading? Yes. And if it bonks out right here, you may have to turn the radio off and then turn it back on to download. It also might time out, and that would have to do with the baud rate that we changed earlier. So make sure that the baud rate was configured to the 38,400. Download is complete. OK. I'm just going to close out of this screen. I'm going to want to save your changes. If I have, say, 20 other radios that I need to program, at any time, you can just open up the profile that you made by double-clicking on it. 
then you can either download with this key or go to radio download and you don't need to upload every time you program the radio you just need to download thank you for your time today if you have any questions or if you need anything else please contact us at 2A Radio Center thank you so much